Hello everyone, my name is Oktay, Oktay Alcu, and this is the first part of my presentation. And in this part, I'm going to talk about the vowels of the English language. So in this part, uh, we are going to talk about, uh, I'm, I'm going to introduce you to vowels, and we are going to talk about differences between lengthening and shortening vowels, and we are going to talk about the trap vowel. So let's start. So as you can see, almost like every sound, uh, you can see almost every sound in what is known as a IPA chart, right? And uh, in this IPA chart, you can also see uh, vowels, which are represented in a vowel diagram. Uh, you can see uh, vowels such as like, E or U or E or like A or O, right? And I guess this uh, represents like every language's vowels. So English language uh, has less amount of vowels. So, I mean, as you can see, there are less and less uh, vowels in the English language. So a feature of these vowels in the English language is that you can lengthen them or you can shorten them, right? Uh, I'm not so sure if you can see quite clearly, but if you look at the picture on the right, uh, on the left, sorry, you can see right next to the uh, vowels, you can see a colon, right? And in those columns, uh, those columns represent that you can lengthen that uh, vowel. So if you were to, you know, uh, okay, we can, and see how are they pronounced. So we can start with the short ones. Uh, you could, we would say E from here, E as in kit. You would say E as in dress. You would say A as in trap. And you would say O as in lot. And you would say E as in a boat, right? So if you would have, if you would lengthen these uh, vowels, they would sound like fleas, nurse, goose, thought, or palm, right? I mean, as I've said before, these columns represent if you can lengthen or uh, if you can lengthen the vowels. So vowels can change depending on the word. Uh, vowels can be lengthened or shortened depending on the word, and we are going to see there examples uh, in a few slides later than this. Also, as a feature of the uh, English language vowels, uh, you can have what is known as a diphthong. So what are diphthongs are also known as like glides. So what are they is that they are, uh, how should I say, you can basically glide sounds between vowels, right? As an example, you can see on the screen, you would say A as in face, right? You would go between A and E, you would go A. You would say I as in price, you would say OI as in choice, you would say O as in mouth. Uh, that one's wrong, I guess. O as in mouth. And GOAT as in O, and E as in near and A as in square, or cure as in ur, right? You can see, you can go between like one uh, consonant, uh, oh sorry, consonant, say consonant, one vowel between another, and you can glide between those uh, vowels and you can make a uh, new sound, basically. And, if you've completed the course, I'm sure you have seen uh, this example, but if you haven't seen it, uh, I'm going to talk about this. And this example uh, really much uh, solidifies how much vowels can uh, affect our intelligibility. So what happens in this uh, example is that a pilot is trying to land a plane in an airfield, right? And the pilot is talking to the air traffic controller and the air traffic controller is giving coordinates 
to the pilot. So the air traffic controller says to the pilot, turn two to zero, right? But the pilot uh, hears him uh, wrongly and he confirms this saying, turning to two two zero. So uh, just because of that, and the plane crashes and uh, people's lives in that plane just got endangered, endangered just because of one misunderstanding of a language, uh, of a vowel, right? I mean, it's pretty uh, important for us to learn our vowels correctly. So, I mean, as I've said before, vowels uh, can change their length. As you can see in this uh, example, this is quite sensible. Uh, you would say the E vowel in ship in a short way, you would say ship, but you would say sheep and you lengthen it a little bit more. It's very sensible and it's very easy to understand, right? But in some cases in this language, uh, although some uh, vowels are inherently short or long, they can be pronounced uh, shorter or longer depending uh, on depending if they're before a consonant that is voiced or not. So if you if you look at the picture on the left, you could see that uh, the e vowel comes before uh, the p consonant, which is not voiced. So it would uh, sound normally in short, you would say rip. But if the E vowel uh, comes uh, before a voice consonant like B, you would say, I mean, you would lengthen the vowel. You would say rib. No, you would, do, you would not say rib, you would say rib, right? You can see, you can hear uh, a little bit of lengthening that goes in there. So, if you look and the picture on the right, you can also see that inherently E is a long uh, vowel, but it, if that uh, vowel comes before a voiceless uh, consonant, you would uh, shorten it, although it is inherently longer, right? So you would say leak, you would not say leak, but if it's before a voice consonant, you would say, like E, you would say leak, you would lengthen it. So I'm going to uh, read these uh, examples for you, and you can stop the video and uh, read them aloud yourself. I'm going to read the correct pronunciations, and you can see how much lengthening or shortening uh, vowels can change your pronunciation of a word. So, in order to start, okay, we, you say book, you would say boo, you say foot, you say food, full, fool, look, look, pull, pool, suit, suit. And if you would go on to the sentences, you go, the cook took a good look at the pudding and put sugar in it. And for the other sentence, we would say, Tuesday's too soon to move the new music stool into the school. I mean, you can see uh, how much uh, lengthening or shortening vowels can change your pronunciation of words, right? And now we can go on to the uh, trap vowel. Well, trap vowel, uh, as you can see, is a sound between, I mean, or, I mean there should be an epsilon symbol over right uh, here in the open mid section, but I guess this picture doesn't know, but uh, it's between the sound A and E, and it is written like this, a uh, collision between A and E. So what this sound, uh, so what sound this trap vowel makes is that you would read this sound as if you were reading the word trap, 
to rap, eh, trap, right? That's because, and that's why this vowel is called trap because it makes that sound. But uh, for secondary English learners, uh, most of the language, languages that are out there doesn't, uh, they don't have uh, the trap vowel. So they compensate that fact by getting closer to a or e. So they could say like, uh, if they didn't have this uh, trap vowel in their language, they would read trap as in trap or trap, you know? So there was also a split between uh, the trap vowel that is called trap bass split. So what happened was that before the 17th century, uh, as you can see, these were trap, hand, bath, and dance were read uh, as I read them uh, just right now. They were read as trap, hand, bath, and dance, right? So people from like northern Britain, uh, northern parts of Britain still speak in this way. But uh, after the 17th century, uh, people I guess decided to uh, change their way of speaking and they split this vowel kind, uh, kind of. So you would uh, still say trap and hand in the same way, but uh, you would say bath and dance like this, bath and dance, right? So this was the end of my, end of my first part of this uh, presentation. And I hope to see you in the next one. See you and thank you.